Hello and welcome back to part 26 of my journey towards my Bachelor of Science Information Technology degree from Western Governors University. So today's video is all about user interface design, which is class number C773, which is worth four credit units. So this particular class is one of those external cert type classes. You have to pass that to be able to pass the class. So in this particular case, it's the CIW User Interface Designer Certification. So today's video basically is just going to be about what I did, uh, what study uh, material I used and how I managed to get through this class. So let's talk about the learning materials that Western Government University provide you for this particular class. The good news, there's a lot of it and it's actually fairly good and comprehensive. What I will say is what they provide is actually enough to pass this particular class. I, you don't necessarily have to go looking on YouTube or um you know, uh, elsewhere to find material to pass this class, which is good. So let's talk about that actual material. So first of all, as always, there's uh, uh, materials provided by you certified. There's actually nine different sections in the learning. So each one of those chapters, you can, uh, there's cards and quizzes, so you can test yourself along the way. A pre-assessment, uh, one practice exam and a post-assessment are also provided to you. So you have some like exams to, to practice as well. Overall, the material is quite in-depth. I think there's over 100 pages in the manual combined. And honestly, you probably have to look through all of it if you've never worked on this type of uh, subject before. So the reason I say that is some of the questions on the exam are actually quite quirky and quite niche. So not all of it, of course, and it, they cover the main main broad soaps as you'd expect. But some of the questions, like I said, were unless you'd read the entire manual, uh, you might not get them right. So uh, this particular exam is a 75 percent pass mark, I believe. But uh, so you probably won't need those odd three or four questions that are kind of hidden in this manual. But trust me, they are in there. So if you have read the manual and you're pretty confident with it, I think you should be OK. So let's dig into the material just a little bit more. So as I said before, there's nine main sections in the learning material. And if I'm uh, hopefully putting this up on the screen for you now, I would recommend that you really try and focus on sections three, six and eight. Uh, they are the user center web design, designing a basic website and designing and developing a professional site. Those are heavily um, referred to in the exam. So I would say really try and focus on those particular areas. So once you've gone through the material and you're fairly comfortable with it and uh, you're scoring quite well on the practice exams, so I would say maybe 85, 90 percent, then you're probably ready to go ahead and try your luck at the exam. And that's where the fun begins. Let me explain a little bit more about that. So this particular exam has a unique registration process. In fact, this is the only particular exam in this degree program that you have to use a different proctoring service from the two that we've already seen to this point. So Pearson VUE, I'm pretty sure you've probably seen that. They do all the comp tier exams. And of course, um, WG's at WGU's own proctoring service. So we've seen those guys and we're pretty comfortable with their uh, kind of, you know, their process. So for this particular exam, you have to register via a company called PSI. Now, I'm fairly certain they're not based in the US uh, simply because of the communication methods. Their website is very quirky. Uh, you have to register for it, which is uh, quite laughable, really, because as part of the instructions that you get when you get your exam voucher, they say you need to register with your Western Governor University email address. So you log into the site, you try to register. And before you can even book the exam, they want to confirm your account. So they send you a email to your email address, which of course you've registered with your Western Governor University email. Now, for whatever reason, I was not ever able to get that email to arrive and not for the lack of trying, keep resending and resending the email. And until you register that email and confirm it, basically you can't schedule the exam. So you can see this kind of frustration I had. Um, no amount of emails and the uh, support uh, number, they didn't answer. There's a little uh, contact us box on the screen that you can talk to someone. Again, it was almost like talking to a bot and probably was, if I'm honest with you. So the whole process was kind of frustrating right from the start. In the end, I used to use my personal email address and was able to register, immediately confirm the account and then go ahead and schedule the exam. 
So not a great start. So let's talk about the actual exam experience itself. This one's a strange one as well. Now, a lot of times the actual proctor, once you log in, will actually speak to you. Not in this case. They do everything via a text box, like an instant messenger communicator. So you follow the same kind of processes. You know, you show them your room and your workspace, that kind of stuff. But no, at no point are they ever actually speaking to you. They don't use an external webcam like the Western Government University guys do. So it's all through your uh, external cam. Now you, uh, sorry, your internal cam. Now you can use the external cam, I'm sure, but it's not required, just like the Pearson VUE ones. So it's just a different type of scenario. The other really strange thing about this particular exam is when you complete it at the very end, there's very strict uh, instructions about how to close out the exam. So first of all, there's a button to click that says end exam, but you'd think, well, that's the end of it, but it isn't. Now, here's the important thing is once you end your exam, there's an extra step. You then have to go to another menu and then click a button that request end exam. So why you have this two step process is a little unique, but I think it's to do with the fact that they flash your results up once the exam ends on the screen. And from there, you can see whether you've passed or not. Now, I made the mistake of simply just closing out the browser. I didn't do the end exam. And what happened was my exam didn't close out and it just sat there. Now, no amount of emails and support again to this particular PSI could get me to fix this. In the end, I actually had to contact CWI, which is the company that produced the exam, and they were able to manually close out the exam for me. That took two days. So eventually, I got my results. But the annoying thing is, for like two or three days, I simply did not know whether I passed the exam or not, which is kind of frustrating. So my big tip from all of that blah is follow the instructions that they provide you. It's a little different. You have to close the exam, you end the exam, they show you a result, and then you have to click a further button to actually execute and you know finally close out the exam, if you like. So different, and uh, hopefully you don't make the same mistake as I did. So let's talk about the actual exam itself. It's an hour and 15 minutes long. It's uh, 54 questions, they're multiple choice. Um, if you go out to the CWI website, you can get a list of the uh, exam objectives. I'll go ahead and put that in the description as well. That's quite important. I would say you take a look at those because just like everything, they need to be, anything they ask you in the exam is going to be in the objectives. So as long as you feel pretty comfortable about you know what's in there, then you should be okay. Now, this isn't the easiest class for everybody. And the reason I say that is this is kind of unique. Yes, this is a technical quiz, and you are going to get questions about technical scenarios, but a lot of it is kind of logical thinking. It almost reminded me of critical thinking exam, you know, where they give you a question, and sometimes it's quite a long question, and you sit there and you look at the answers, and often all four of them could be right. It's that kind of, you know, quiz. And then you like has to deduct which ones are not right and which ones, you know, and then try and narrow it down and eventually come up with the right answer. And like I said, some are pretty obvious and there are a couple of quick uh, trick questions, at least in the exam I got. But for the most part, it was fairly challenging, I have to say. The good news is um, I was able to pass. I scored 90 percent, which is which is pretty good. I think that equates to about 48 or 49 out of 54, which is pretty good going. Um, Honestly, I, when I clicked the end exam, I wasn't fully sure, you know, where I was. So I'm glad I passed. It was certainly harder than I thought. And I would say to you guys, make sure you read the entire manual, like I said, because there's some niche questions in there. Uh, practice the practice exams. But really, um, just open up your mind to kind of like a critical thinking. Now, there are some web, uh, WGU has produced some um videos that kind of help you uh, prepare for this particular exam it's out there you've had a search for it and it kind of helps you like they, they give some examples and they help you break it down how to think in that way to get the right answer and that, i think that definitely helped me because there was a few times that i thought i knew the answer i looked again and thought well you know what that doesn't actually make sense so look for keywords like best or uh which uh you know uh you know, which solution serves, serves this particular client the best, that kind of thing. So it's uh, it's just about narrowing it down and really working out the answer. So overall, not my favorite class by any means. Um, not the hardest exam, but certainly up there. This one isn't easy. Uh, in total, I probably spent, 
well, quite a long time actually to be fair, probably close to two weeks. And that's part of the reason why some of my videos haven't been as frequent as recently, because these last few classes have taken a while and they are like, these are things I don't know anything about. So obviously when you're studying for something, you don't know anything about it. It takes a little bit longer. And of course it makes it even worse when you're studying something you don't enjoy. You know, that obviously I'm sure you've been in that situation. So that makes it even worse. Um, the beauty of a Western Gov's university, as I said previously before, is it's competency based. So if you know something about the subject or, you know, you can pretty much move forward fairly quickly. This is one of those classes that really in my experience was limited. Now, there is a little bit of a throwback to some of the other classes I've done in this degree program. Some of the web development classes are kind of touched on that. There are some HTML type questions and scenarios which will help you uh, CSS files, things like that. Uh, also a little bit of scripting. So if you've done the, uh, the scripting class, that will help as well. But overall, it's a solid class. The material Western government universities provide is enough. Um, I see a lot of people take a couple of attempts to pass this and I can see why this is not easy. And um, I would say don't underestimate, go for the material and you should be fine. So that's all I have for today. I'm sorry about the kind of length of this particular video. I try and always try and keep them quite short, but this one was quite an important subject. So I thought I'd uh, put a little bit more information into it. So a quick update for you. Uh, it's the 18th of February today. So I'm 18 days into term two. And I now have just two classes remaining to graduate, which is uh, which is pretty awesome. And those are the capstone project and then the retake of the Linux Essentials exam. If you remember, I failed that uh, previously. So that's where I am. Hopefully, you know, uh, within the next few weeks, I'll be all done and uh, I'll have graduated. But well, I'll give you updates, of course, as that happens. Um, in the meantime, uh, just keep uh, keep up the hard work. Uh, I know this is difficult. Um, I know you're all struggling out there. I know you're all working through it, but uh, keep the faith, keep churning forward, and you're all going to be great. I'm sure of it. But um, take care for now. Stay safe. Stay warm, and uh, I'll speak to you soon.